Hello, lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. I'm super excited to announce that the Microsoft Machine Learning Kit for Lobe, in partnership with Adafruit, is now live, yeah! So why is this kit cool? Well, because it's designed to make machine learning on the edge, like on a Raspberry Pi computer, easier and more accessible for folks who are total beginners. If you're like, uh, what is machine learning? No problem, this is a great place to start and all the way to expert data scientists. This is also a really handy kit to build prototypes and to build custom models uh, very quickly. So Loeb is a uh, Microsoft app that is free and no code. In this video, I will show you how to, uh, well, I'll show you a demo of the kit, which gives you kind of a sense of what it's capable of. I will talk about what is in the kit and why, and then we will dig into more detail on how to actually use Lobe, deploy a model, get it on the Pi, and how to grab the sample code that this kit uh, ships with, um, or at least it's on GitHub, uh, how to get that code um, on the Pi and deploy uh, the sample code. Okay, so let's get started. Woo, to hardware cam, turn your attention to the desktop or tabletop, please. So I have a Python script running with a, um, a game. And what I'm gonna do is try and get my hand out of the way. <laughs> so, um, and then I'll figure out, one of the things I am on the struggle bus with is like, this is a really hard angle for me to see what is on the screen. So we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna figure out where my hand goes. And then I'm gonna press the button. It's gonna take a picture. Rock! <laughs> okay, and what's the computer play? Oh, the pie played the same. Okay, and then I take, I'm gonna do it again because I would like to win. Thank you. We'll see here what the computer does. It's random. What? Hmm. Fine. Okay, one more time. We'll play one more time. I'm gonna crack up if we play rock again. The computer plays rock. Ha! Boom! Okay, I won. <laughs> One out of three. So this, uh, aside from the Raspberry Pi computer, I would say the, the star of the kit is the Adafruit BrainCraft hardware on top, or hardware attached on top, or hat for short. Um, so this was designed specifically by Lamore, yay Lamore, for doing machine learning models on the edge. So it has an onboard screen, which is so clutch. Um, the previous machine learning project that I did, I didn't have a screen and it was a really fun game of trying to figure out what the camera was looking at. So this is super helpful. Um, it also has a button and a joystick on board for input for inputs. There are some outputs. So there's a couple of NeoPixels here. There are some handy dandy JST connectors to more easily plug in output devices like sensors or this an input uh, like motors. And there's a speaker input which i thought would be super fun to make like gesture controlled music player so maybe that'll be on my list of projects to do um the other things you get in the kit are here i can also change the image on the screen so you can choose the kit with or without a pi because i know a lot of you already have a raspberry pi so you can just grab that and use it with the kit um, if you prefer to get a Pi specific for the kit, or if you've never used one before, you can also grab a Raspberry Pi um, included in the kit. So we recommend a four uh, gigabyte RAM Raspberry Pi 4. It just makes the machine learning model run faster and it gives you some more space, especially because we're doing image classification, uh, taking an image and applying a label to it. Um, that can take up a lot of space. Um, so there's a lot of images uh, that you might be taking and storing on the Raspberry Pi. Um, so the kit also comes with a Raspberry Pi camera and an extension cable for that, so you can install it in some funky places. There's a camera case, which this is the beta version of the kit, so I don't have that, but I'm really happy it comes with a camera case because it's super clutch for installing. Um, there's a power supply, a, an SD card and an SD card, a micro SD card and an SD card adapter. And then there's some really cute lobe stickers. So maybe not, the stickers might not be critical hardware, but you can use them to build a simple model as you're figuring out how to use lobe. Okay, so that is the kit. Um, Microsoft or lobe by Microsoft is a 
free app, so you can download it from lobe.ai. And once you download it, uh, if you open it on a PC, well, I think it looks the same on a Mac as well, but it looks like this. I made a little bit of a sample project. And in this project, I have three categories of photos. I'm gonna go to the Use tab to show you how you can test your model. Maybe, it's gonna load. I have like 45 cameras running, so it's very slow. Oh, and there's a hair out of place that I can see from that angle. Great. Do, 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 do. It's taking its sweet time. Too many cameras. Mm, okay, well, oh, there we go. Oh, of course, I switch out. I get impatient as soon as it's done. Okay, maybe it'll go faster this time. Yay, that's a Gen Fox bot. <laughs> ah, okay, and then if I hide, what's it saying? What's it saying? Uh oh. It should say nothing. Woo! It says nothing! Okay, there's definitely a delay. And then <laughs> if I go like this, uh, wait a second, pop it. <laughs> okay, I have way too much fun building lobe models. Okay, so. Loeb lets you import any photos uh, from a folder, and you also can import via an attached camera. Um, once you have at least five photos in each label, the Loeb model starts training automatically, and then the Use tab allows you to explore your model and figure out which categories are working well and which categories are not working so well. And you can update your model by saying, yes, great job, this is the appropriate label that I wanted, and if not, you can say no, and you can relabel it. Um, so I'm not going to do that. Once, uh, oh, I would also recommend adding a nothing or a uh, an empty category, because if you don't give the machine learning model the option to have like an empty category, it's always going to try to fit its prediction into one of the existing categories. So even if there's nothing there and you take a picture, let's say you have some bird classification or something like that, and it, you get a picture of just grass, there's no bird there. If you don't have an empty category, the machine learning model will try to shove that image into one of the bird categories because you haven't you haven't trained it to, to recognize that there is also a category where there might be nothing. So that's a really critical category to have for all of your machine learning models. Once your model is ready to go, go to the export tab. And then we are going to go and export with TensorFlow Lite. TensorFlow Lite is a little bit smaller than TensorFlow, and it will work a little bit better on an edge device like the Raspberry Pi, which has a little bit you know, smaller memory than your uh, computer. So save this in an easy to reach location. There are gonna be two files. And then once you have downloaded those two files, um, start a session in your preferred file transfer program um, or FTP program, file transfer protocol. Um, I like WinSCP personally because I am able to uh, drag any types of files, any folders, that sort of thing, and I am a very visual person, so I like the user interface. Oh, da, da, da. It's taking a hot second. Oh, you know what? It's because it's running a program, probably. So let me stop the program. Control C. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Come back, please. Oh, look at that. There we go. Okay. So it is connecting. Um, if you don't know the IP address for your Raspberry Pi, you can either log into your router and look at for connected devices. That's what I usually do. Um, or if you want to be lazy, I also do this all the time, uh, you can connect to the Raspberry Pi local, which is the host name of the of the computer. Oh, that's weird. Um, so maybe it's not going to connect right now. Okay, so connected over here, so connected over here. Um, I did run into an issue with WinSCP the first time I connected. It didn't like the local host name because it was a little concerned that it was a security issue. Um, so I think if you go into uh, the configuration settings, you can 
set that up as set that up as an option. Oh, you know what? I bet the IP address has changed. Okay, so we'll just do this from the beginning. Host name. Uh, we'll do. It might not like this, so bear with me. Because if the IP address changed, then the the IP address changed and the host name will be pointing somewhere different. There's not exist. Did I spell that right? Raspberry Pi local. This is fun. Okay, fine. Um, I'll just get its IP address here. Da, da, da. Oh, that's interesting. It did change. 192.168.1.2. Hey, look, this is educational. <laughs> okay. All right. Ah. Oh. Okay. Okay. <gasps> Struggle bus. Struggle bus. All right. Maybe. Fingers crossed. <gasps> oh, yay. Okay, cool. Boom. Okay, so here is the Raspberry Pi, woo! So on the Pi side, create a folder called model, exactly, spelled exactly as is, if you wanna use our sample code. And then copy the lobe models into that folder. Um, I don't want to replace my existing model because it's the rock, paper, scissors model and not the Gen Fox bot puppet or nothing model. Um, so make sure that that folder is in the home directory for the Pi. Okay, so once you have done that, then log into your Pi. Uh, I am using it in uh, terminal over SSH. You can also just do a desktop connection. Um, if the Win SCP thing is a little too technical for you, no problem. Just email yourself the files, or what, or you know, upload it to uh, OneDrive or Google Docs or whatever you prefer, and then download it on the Raspberry Pi. Lots of different. Uh, approaches depending on what your uh, familiarity and expertise is. Cool. Okay, so on this side, I'm going to go to the home directory. Um, so we see our model folder right here. And um, what I am going to do is download the GitHub repo for the sample code. It's in here somewhere. Okay, so you type git clone. If you're in desktop, on the Raspberry Pi, just open a terminal window and type this. Um, if you don't want to type the full URL, I totally feel you. Uh, you can go to the GitHub repo site, click on the code, and copy this. Um, so you can either input this. Um, you could probably search for the uh, the lobe dash Adafruit dash uh, kit. It's also in linked in uh, the tutorials as well. Okay. So once you have that, um, you would hit enter. I already have this and it doesn't want to override it. Thank you, appreciate that. Once you have the folder, um, which is called lobe-adafruit-kit, go ahead and open that folder. And again, if you're on the desktop, just open the uh, file browser. And then I would always recommend running, whenever you want to test how the model is working on the Raspberry Pi, I would recommend using the lobe dash basic dash prediction. I guess I don't have to type that. Um, dot pi program because what this does, hardware cam, is allow you to kind of test live action how your model works. And so in this model, I kind of I kind of knew <laughs> that there was a problem this orientation. So in this hand orientation where my thumb's not very visible, the pi I should say the machine learning model classifies that as, classifies my hand gesture as scissors. So that would be an opportunity for me to take more pictures at different angles and improve that prediction. Um, a really quick note, this is called inferencing where your machine learning model is making predictions on new images. And then I can test different hand signs and be like, okay, this one is really not working. So I need to add a lot more pictures. Because your Raspberry Pi camera is gonna have a different perspective, it also you know, is taking pictures in a different way, um, different pixel sizes, different colors, 
kind of that sort of thing. Um, the machine learning model is going to behave differently on the Raspberry Pi camera. So regardless of what uh, project you're doing, if you're following along with the sample projects or you're doing your own, I would recommend testing it before you get really far down the rabbit hole. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel that. Um, the other sample code that we have in here, we'll just list it again. Um, so we have lobe-capture, which takes a photo, lobe-package detector, um, which allows you to build a, well, package detector that notifies you when you get a package, and the rock-paper-scissors game that I showed you earlier. So last thing, ooh, we're getting to the end. So the guides and sample code that we provided with the kit, um, they kind of increase in complexity and difficulty and skill level. So if you're new to machine learning, start with the first one. And honestly, if you're new to Lobe, it might be helpful to peruse through and just make a couple of test models. Um, so this goes through basic, the basic concepts of machine learning. It'll teach you a little bit of terminology. It'll show you how to use Lobe. It'll show you how to test the model with some tips like we covered earlier. And, um, and then it'll also show you how to set up the Raspberry Pi. Um, the second program is the machine learning game, uh, Rock, Paper, Scissors. So this digs more into how to use the brain craft, which is super fun. So getting machine learning models on the edge to start interacting and, and triggering things in the physical world, which I love doing. This is why I love hardware. Physical computing for the win. Okay, and then the last project um, is an ML package detector with Loeb. And so uh, this project digs more into how to do what is called continuous learning. Um, basically what I was talking about um, on the Pi, how the camera is seeing things in different angles with light, different lighting and that sort of stuff. It's better to take images from the Pi camera from its final installation perspective. Um, so basically like if you're doing a package detector, install the camera take some photos from that perspective and then use those photos to train your lobe model and make it better. And so this tutorial will walk you through how to do that, including how to use um, the sample code that is provided in the GitHub repo. Cool, okay, and then we have some going further tips, um, but I would love to hear what your ideas would be for this kit if you end up building stuff with it. Please, please, please share those projects. Um, I'd love to see them. And let me know if you have any questions or suggestions or other types of feedback. I'm super excited. Uh, thanks so much to the Loeb team and to Adafruit Industries. Uh, I'm so happy that this kit exists. Go forth and make all the things, my friends. Yay, bye!